Hi, welcome to educators.com. I'm Shravanti, your Hadoop instructor. In this module, we are going to discuss about high bucketing, difference between the partitioning and the bucketing, enabling the bucketing in the high, high bucketing example, table sampling in the high, and also the sorting in the high. High bucketing. Here, this bucketing is also made to improve the performance of your queries. We will be defining these uh, buckets. So, what exactly is going to happen when you define the buckets is nothing but here internally it uses the hash algorithm. And based on the hash algorithm, whatever the values you are having, all your values are distributed into those specific buckets itself. For example, if I specify the bucket as a 10 buckets, at the time of the creating the table itself, we need to specify how many buckets you wanted to define. With the help of the cluster by clause, uh, you can define the number of buckets. This number of buckets are always fixed and whatever, even the million records are available, all the values are always fixed into the specific number of the bucket itself. So this is the number of fixed buckets. So what is the advantage is nothing but instead of navigating across the, all the million records, whenever we specify the bucket, bucket in, internally it uses the hash algorithm and it understands that in which bucket your value has been stored. So that it will, it need not to go into any other, all the, all the millions of the records over here. It can simply go to that specific bucket and it can fetch the record from there. So here, when I say that bucketing, it especially organizes the table into the multiple buckets. The reason behind it is to get the more efficient queries. Whatever we are talking about, the partitioning and the bucketing is the mainly to improve the performance. For so that reasons, we will be using these concepts. As we mentioned you that it uses the hash algorithm to store all of your uh, details into those specific buckets itself. It can fit in the given buckets. And also another time uh, when you can use the bucketing is nothing but if suppose the multiple tables are there and you wanted to join those two tables. So you must require a join column, right? In the normal scenario, we will call that as a foreign key and the primary key if you wanted to join those two tables. So if those columns, if the join columns are already, you know, using the bucketing, so it improves the performance. So in the real-time scenarios, especially if you are having any of these joining, if you are joining the multiple tables and to use the join columns, also you can the bucketing on top of these join columns and you can uh, execute the query. So internally it helps you to write uh, the efficient queries. And also with the help of this bucketing you can uh, do the sampling, it will be more efficient. And we do have a different types of clauses uh, which we will be seeing the table sample clause and with the help of that which you can, uh, uh, you know, which you can even uh, display the content in each of these buckets. So if you see the difference between the partitioning and the bucketing, the partitioning, if you are talking about the dynamic partition or whatever, so here there is no fixed number of the subfolders are going to be created. The dynamic partition, suppose a new country is additionally added, so automatically a new partition subfolder is going to be created. But here, in the bucketing, you will be always having the fixed number of the slices. Suppose if I define a 10 buckets, it is going to be entire, irrespective of the data, it is always going to be use this particular 10 buckets itself. But both of them are for the, um, you know, improve the performance itself. And one more thing, for example, you wanted to create some in the last module, we have seen the consumer complaints. So CCID is there, for instance. So if you wanted to have your, uh, you know, if you wanted to define a partition on that CCID column, 
is going to create a lot of small partitions because that is a unique ID. It is going to create a lot of small partitions and which is going to be reduce the performance instead of improving the performance. Suppose to avoid that what you can do is if you wanted to put a bucketing and let's assume that there are 1000 rows. So here if you create a 10 buckets there. So each of the row will be consisting of the 100 records will be going and storing in the each of these bucket files. So like this based on the scenarios like in which case you wanted to use the in which case you wanted to use the bucketing you have to decide based on which column you want is going to be used multiple times in your query. And to enable in the bucketing you must need to set this particular property hype.enforce.bucketing to true. If you forget this you will not see the bucket. You will not be getting any of the issues but once you go into the uh, user hive warehouse directory or else any other external locations to see this bucketing it is not even possible. So make sure to set that particular parameter from your shell itself. And also here if you see the syntax of this we will be using the cluster by clause and also we have to define how many number of the buckets you require. Cluster by which is the column ID into four buckets. The rest of the things are same. How you will be creating the tables. The same syntax but additionally you will have to give the cluster by and this is the column on which column you will be having your uh, bucketing on into fixed number of buckets. So in this case suppose four buckets like this. Yeah, so let me log into the Cloudera Quick Start VM and show you the bucketing example. So in the last module we have uh, created a CC underscore POP table or uh, like we have used the consumer complaint table, right? So, so here in this example we are going to uh, show you how exactly a uh, bucketing can be done. And also one more thing, a point to be noted here you can have both partition and bucketing both can be available on the same table also. So if you see this example, I am using the partition by clause and I am specifying the partition and here also I am using the cluster by clause. So both of them also possible. You can keep uh, both partition and bucketing at the same time in the table as well but not on the same column. Okay, let me log into the cloud era quick start and here. I'm just opening my terminal to log into the hive shell. Click on the terminal button. Yeah. After just log into the hive, just uh, uh, place the content, uh, create table, the CC bucketing table which we are creating, and uh, uh, th this is the same data set which we have uh, seen the consumer complaint data set, right? So here we are creating the CC bucketing table, and also as I mentioned, you without partitioning also you can uh, uh, write and even you can combine both partitioning or as well as the bucketing as well. So in this case I have used the both partitioning over here with the help of the partition by clause and the bucketing with the help of the cluster by clause. If you observe zip code uh, whatever the zip code which we are having is I am taking that as a bucketing uh, column. So based on that it will be dividing into the three different files. So the bucketing table has been created. As I mentioned you, before you are invoking using the partitioning and the bucketing, you must need and now before we are loading any of the data into this, we must need to enabling the enforcing uh, bucketing to true and also as the partitions are also there, these are the dynamic partitions, we have to set these uh, um, high partitions to dynamic partition more to non strict and the partition more to true as well. Yeah. So to include that. Um, yeah, let me execute it separately. Yeah, so just after creating the table, we are just enabling that uh, enforcing bucketing to true. And also, what we are doing here is uh, uh, we are uh, enabling the hive execution dynamic partition to true because we are also using the partitions as part of this. Uh, so, that is the reason why we are setting up all of this. Similar way, we are also, as it is a non strict mode, we are uh, and now I can directly load that data with the help of the insert into this uh, CC bucket table and uh, 
these two are the previous partitions, right? So now uh, we are just loading that the data. And here, uh, in terms of the bucketing, you need not take care about anything. It's a normal insert or normal load you can use. The only thing is while creating the table, you have to specify the cluster by class and how many number of buckets you need and you have to enable in the bucketing. Apart from that, insertion time, if you see the query, I am not doing anywhere, I am not specifying about the bucket. Right. Unlike the partition, here you have to maintain like which partitions are and what are those values and if it is a static or dynamic, directly you have to give those values. So once the CC bucketing is loaded, once I go back to my user high warehouse directory inside the CC bucket, you can see the lot of multiple uh, files are going to be created. If the map release job gets finished, so we can even see those uh, things. Yeah, the job was uh, executed over here successfully and if you wanted to see, uh, just go into your local host and 500704 port, browser help check page, go to utilities and browse the file system. And here you can search with your user, hive and uh, warehouse directory. And there you can see a folder called uh, CC bucket. Inside this you can see a subfolder. Like initially we have created a two partitions. Product is a first partition and on top of that we have created a sub partition. So here the product, you can see a lot of uh, uh, products over here. And inside the products more tools, and we also have the submitted because in the query, whatever I have executed uh, in the query, we have created the partition. The first partition is product, and the next partition, sub partition, is submitted via. So inside this, you can see the result. See this? If you observe, you saw the three files. So these three files, how we got is nothing but these are all the um, bucketing files. Like we divided the bucket into the three clusters, right? Clustered by three buckets. So that is the reason why we have seen the three buckets. And here you can see the data. So this data is belonging to your where product is equal to whichever the condition matches, where product is equal to motor base and uh, submitted via the web, so and so consumer complaint. So that data you can see it as part of uh, this folder. If you cross verify this with your uh, uh, input file, you can even simply see that. You can save it and you can even cross verify that. So this is how uh, bucketing can help you in creating these. Uh, separate files where in case of the um, partitioning it creates these subfolders. This is how you will be having your data and it improves the performance whenever you are trying to execute the queries on top of this. And also here in the hive we do have the table sample class with the help of the table class um, table sample class uh, we can write the queries for the sampling. If you wanted to know or if you wanted to see in the bucket one I wanted to display a uh, first end record. All right, or else some 10 percentage of these records from this one so bucket. So you can easily do that kind of a sampling with the help of the table sample clause. So if you see this, in the table sample clause, if you give this the table sample of 10 percent, that means 10 percent if I give, it will display the content from the, uh, this 10 percentage of the data will be, it will be displaying from your uh, input. In a similar way, apart from the percentage, you can also give the number of rows with the table sample clause. Like 10 rows, if I specify, it is going to display 10 rows from each and every input split. And so here it is a simple query. Normal select query, how you will be writing? Select start from employee, table sample of 10 rows. So from this employee table, if it is a million records are available, so this will display the 10 records from each and every input split. And especially, uh, in terms of the sorting in the hive, similar way in the SQL also we do have the order by clause to do the sorting. So here also we do have the order by clause and we can sort it. But the thing is, order by clause uses a single reducer. That means whenever you are handling with the millions of the records, it takes a lot of time to uh, perform this sorting. That is the reason why it, this order by is uh, usually uh, performance degradation. So to overcome that, we also have the some other class, classes. Uh, with the help of that, also you can perform the sorting. This one is the sort by clause. Similar way, select start from some table name, sort by which column you wanted to sort. Similar way, how ordered by is you are specifying the way you can even specify the sort by as well. But the thing is, here it will be using the multiple reducer. When you use the multiple reducer. 
the values are always started. If you see the output from the regulator 1 and regulator 2, the values are already started like 10,000, 20,000, 40,000, 8, 10, and 30. But the thing is, you will be having the overlapping values. That means, if you see the 10,000, it is also there in the reducer 1. Even in the reducer 2, also I am having the 10,000. But if you wanted to, you know, find out some minimum or maximum such kind of thing, you must need to have all the values have to go to the same reducer. Wherever I am having the 10,000, all these 10,000 should must come to the same reducer. So, Sort by is nothing but with the help of the sort by we can uh, see the sorting order but it is ha having these uh, overlapping values. So to overcome the overlapping values, to get the non-overlapping values, we have the distributed clause. With the help of the distributed by clause, what we can do is whatever the same values are there, it always guarantees that it will come to the same reducer. So if you see this 10,000, it came over here into the reducer 1 itself. But if you observe the values, it is not sorted manual. 30,000 is there and then, and then, and then you will be having the 8,000, 50,000 like that. So that is nothing but this is not having the sorted values. In simple words, whatever the sort by is doing is simply sorting and distributed by is making sure that uh, whatever the same values are there, it will be coming into the same place. Alright. So here, we will be having a special clause called a cluster by clause. With the help of the cluster by clause, it is similar to sort by plus distributed. Like it will make sure that it does the sorting of your values and also it makes sure that whatever the same values you are having it, it always comes to the same reducer like this. So this is the best thing which you can use purely based on the requirement, which one you wanted to, which one is sufficient for your needs, then you can use these up. Ordered by, sort by, distributed by, and the cluster by clauses. So whatever the clause you wanted to use, you can directly use with the help of the select star from table name and uh, cluster by, and also ordered by so and so column like that. You can mention. So if you see this in this module, we have understand that how to create your bucketing. And we have seen that with the help of the bucketing, how it improves the performance by making whatever the value is specified in the cluster by clause, it will make sure that those many fixed number of the buckets are getting created. And then your data will be loaded into the specific files. It uses the hash algorithm uh, to load this data into the specific bucket. Don't forget to enable the high end put bucketing to true. And also here you can have the table sample clause uh, with the help of that you can do the sampling either based on the rows or based on the percentages. For the sorting we do have the order by, sort by, distributed by and the cluster by clauses. Order by uses a single reducer where in case of the cluster by uses a sort by plus distributed by. Thank you.